As you know, my Planet Ocean has been in for service. Had a little fogging up of the crystal and a little problem with the winding mechanism. Well, it looks like it could be back, so let's see what's inside. Let's open up the hard case and reveal that, hmm? That's not right. There's no watch. What's going on? Welcome to the English watch. If you're a follower of my channel, you'll know that back in May, I sent off my Amiga Planet Ocean to the Amiga Service Centre in Southampton. The dial had been fogging up, and I put it into storage with the crown open and some silica gel in the box. And this was on the advice of the Amiga Service representative that I spoke to in March. Now, clearly because of lockdown, they took their time to send out the service pouch, but nonetheless, the service pouch arrived, and I duly packed it up as instructed, with a few comments of some extra things that I wanted to look at. In the first instance, I had a scuff on the outside of the crystal. I'd put my hand into a closed recycling bin a few years ago, and as I retracted it, I just scuffed the top of the crystal, which I've endured for a year or so, but as it was in, I thought, well, if they can do something with it, then why not us? I also asked them if it was possible to just take out a few of the nicks around the edge of the case and look at the back of the lugs, where I've made a few scratches. In my early career as a watch enthusiast, not knowing what I was doing, just going in there with the uh, spring bar tool and making a bit of a mess. Anyway, the watch had been off for a few months, and at the end of June, I got a call from the Amiga service advisor, and we had a bit of a chat about what the issue was, it's, and it sounded like it was something to do with the setting lever, which was why the, uh, the jumping hour wasn't working correctly when I wound it. There was no explanation as to what was wrong with it, but I did ask, because I do a YouTube channel, I write a blog on EnglishWatch.com, so please check that out, that they could send the defective parts back, and just maybe a little bit of a description as to what was the problem. We didn't talk about why the crystal was fogging up in the first place, which was the initial fault that I'd found with the watch. Anyway, a few days later, this guy phones me back again, and we talked about the case refurbishment. Now, he said to me, look, your watch is in pretty good condition, to be honest, and I know I'm a bit of a stickler for scratches, and, you know, not everyone likes scratches. A lot of you guys aren't bothered by them. For me, I guess they bother me a little bit. Less so these days, but I thought if they could do something with it, then fair enough, have a go. Anyway, what he said to me is he didn't recommend it. He said my case was in pretty good condition for its age, which was only two years old, which I felt pretty good about. So we agreed not to do anything with the case. He said there was nothing they could do about the crystal and recommended changing it. Because I knew there was a flaw there and under certain lighting conditions, it gave a sort of a strange um, effect on the dial. Uh, I would know it was there forever and this was an opportunity to get it changed that I may not come across in the next, you know, could be 10 years before it gets serviced again. So we went ahead. He advised that there'd be a charge of about £150, which, you know, on the face of it, I thought, OK. I'm sure if I'd sent it in just to have the crystal done, it'd have been a lot more. It's a bit like taking your sports car in for a gearbox default and say, why should I just change the clutch? It's always going to be cheaper. So I've been tracking the service progress on Amiga's CIS web service, where they list out the operations that are taking place when they've received the watch, what service operations they're carrying out, and then when it's completed. Because it was a warranty claim, the guy did say that they pushed these through much quickly and you don't necessarily see all the details on the CIS so every day I was logging in and having a look and it wasn't moving and all of a sudden on Monday last week it said it had completed its service brilliant I thought so I duly got an email from Amiga service saying that the watch is complete uh, there was an invoice for 150 pounds for the crystal which I was expecting but there was no instructions on this invoice or the email about how to pay so I thought okay I'll phone them up so I got the number phoned up Amiga service in Southampton hey I've got the invoice I want to pay so the lady I spoke to was very polite she goes oh yes um, I can see that the service is complete oh it's been dispatched uh, with nothing to pay uh, looks like they've covered it all under warranty Ooh, great thanks now initially when I spoke to the service advisor back in June and via email, they sort of agreed as a gesture of goodwill, maybe they'll do the polishing, which, you know, looking at the price list that I showed you last time was about £100. I thought, okay, fair enough. Maybe they've decided to do the crystal instead. So I then get an email from the courier, it says that my watch is on its way and I'll expect it on Tuesday between, I don't know, I can't remember, it was about 10 and 12. Fantastic. So what do I do? Is I get out my, my rubber strap, my rubber Amiga strap. And I'd have a look and I thought, you're going straight on there because you're my holiday watch and it needs the rubber strap on it. I had a few marks and I thought, I'll give it a good wash. And it's come up really nice. Really happy with this strap. Really recommend it. It was about £400 uh, in total. But with the genuine Amiga class and this fantastically made rubber strap, which you can check out a comparison in one of my prior videos where I compared this one with a cheap imitation, I thought, right, good, get it ready. So anyway, Tuesday came. Uh, checking my watch, Submariner today, again, no Amiga, and um, the window for delivery passed. Ooh, so I thought, I'll sort of log on to the uh, courier website and say, yeah, where's my parcel? Um, and it said that it had been returned to the sender. Mm -hmm. No explanation. 
So I called Amiga again. Um, so where's my watch? It says it's been returned. Uh, spoke to the advisor, they said, oh, uh, oh, we don't know. There's no explanation on, on the system. Uh, it'll come back to the postman and there's a guy in the post in the post room. Yeah, he'll sort it out and he'll, he'll return it back to you within a 24 hour period. So, okay, fine, I'll expect it by Thursday at the latest, I guess. Maybe get an email to explain what had happened and that it was on its way. Anyway, Thursday came and went. Get to Friday, which is yesterday. I'm thinking, hmm, no watch. I'll phone him up again. So I phoned up Amiga, spoke to a nice lady there and I asked, well, uh, where's my watch? And I was expecting it back. And she looked on the system and said, oh, um, it's been returned because um, you haven't paid the invoice. And at this point, I was getting a little bit, what? I said, I phoned up on Monday to pay. You said I didn't have to pay because it was covered under warranty and it was sent out Tuesday and it was returned. And you said I'd get it again in a few days. Now you're telling me I've got to pay again. Still no instructions on how to do it. So I, at this point, I'm getting a bit irate and I'm thinking, calm down, Andy, you know. Um, it's only a watch, you know, you've got some other ones you can wear, but that's not the point. I've been messed around by Amiga. And up to that point, I had such a wonderful experience, you know. I'd called them up in March to say I had a problem. There was somebody there to take the call, despite the lockdown and all the troubles. Gave me some advice on leaving the crown open. I sent the pouch out as, as they said they would. And I had conversations with the service advisors all the way through. And then in the last week, just the point where they were going to hand me the watch, it just all went pear-shaped and I, I just... <laughs> I wrote them an email this morning and said, look, I'm not happy. And I kind of explained it in my uh, angry voice <laughs> yesterday. I mean, the lady, poor lady got uh, both barrels. Um, so I apologize if you're listening. Hopefully you are. They did say that they'd go and find the transcript from Monday for when I had the conversation that said that it would be under warranty and uh, take some action from there. I thought, okay, well, I'll expect to call back by the end of Friday, end of yesterday, because I called them in the morning. Anyway, nothing, not an email or anything. So I thought, okay, Mr. Angry on email this morning to customer services, just explain everything I've just explained to you, which is I've done everything I can to get my watch back. I've offered to pay. Uh, so we'll see what comes back. So as we sit here, no watch, um, which means the Submariner gets more wrist time, which is okay, I don't mind that. It's still the perfect sports steel watch. So I'll keep you posted. Now, just to finish this one off, um, I did get a question from one of my viewers regarding the JLC Master Control calendar review I did last week. And the question was about, does the calendar know um, to jump from say the 28th of February to the 1st of March, i.e. is it an annual calendar and understands the months? And um, I thought, oh, I don't know, don't the answer. Because normally I'll, I'll respond pretty quickly if there's a comment on the YouTube channel. But I genuinely didn't know the answer. So I looked on their website, I looked on their press briefing, uh, I looked on some other reviews, I looked at some other reviews from the prior model, you know, listened to Tim Mosso, went on blog to watch a number of different media and uh, nobody mentioned whether it was an annual calendar or not. I thought, okay, well, I'll phone them up. So went on the website, I tried their messenger service, like a Facebook messenger service, That's, that didn't work. Um, so I just phoned them up, uh, spoke to a nice lady, um, I think in, in their London boutique. Uh, she didn't know, um, but she went and said she'd find out for me. Uh, and needless to say, she emailed me back with the full details and the instruction manual. And needless to say, it's not an annual calendar. Um, so what does that mean? So what it means is it gets to the end of February, so 28th, and I'm assuming that it will say on the 29th and 30th of February, and you've got to go in there and start to interfere with the watch. Um, now, that's, I suppose that's a good and a bad thing, isn't it? So you could argue that... Um, you get more time interacting with your watch. It's a nice complex watch, the moon phase and the calendar. But on the other hand, you say, well, this watch is nearly 10,000 pounds. Why doesn't it know it's the 1st of March? Yeah, good question. So has that dampened my enthusiasm for the watch? I think temporarily it has, but I think I need more time with it to, to truly make a, a full judgment on this. I mean, I'm not in a position to buy it at the moment anyway, and there are some other watches on the list that, that could replace it. I saw a nice video this morning from the London watch collector regarding his Rolex Explorer 1 that he picked up. Now this is a watch I tried on last year and I felt a little bit underwhelming. Now I've had a few large watches since then and I'm maybe I'm sort of going back towards that simplicity. Uh, I know they're difficult to get hold of still. Um, and you always think, oh, I wish I bought it at the time. But I could say that with the Milgauss and any other watch I've ever tried on in the past. You know, you can't always make those um, rash decisions at the time because, you know, we're not all as uh, well healed as that fella. You know, he seems to be able to just go out, not only just buy the watch of his dreams or, or whatever, or on a whim, but also get all the box, the stickers, the bezel protectors, everything else that goes with it. So good luck to him, to be fair. Anyway, 
we'll cut it there. So don't forget to like and subscribe. This is a blog, so it's about me collecting watches, about my journey. This is not about me giving you a higher level of information that you can get in a multitude of other places. So I hope you enjoy my little rambling here. Uh, it is a bit of a rant, so I hope it's been interesting for you. So don't forget to give it a thumbs up, leave the little comments at the end, because I love responding to them, as you know, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.